Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy New Year. Oh, we thank you, Father God. If you have anything to be thankful about this morning, let us stand and give him a praise. If you have anything to be thankful about, if you have anything that happened to you this past year that makes you want to give him a praise, give him a praise and say hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name, Father God. We enter your uh place with thanksgiving in your courts with praise this morning father god we give you glory honor and praise because you are due father god so much more hallelujah lord we come before you this morning lord thanking you for bringing us through father a turbulent year 2022 father god and here we are today father we're on the other side of 2023 only because of you lord only because of your grace only because of your mercy hallelujah only because of your favor only because of your unconditional love hallelujah father god we worship you lord we thank you lord we thank you for who you are lord we thank you for who you have been father god we bless your name lord we bless your name because you're worthy to be praised father god you brought us through yet again lord and we say hallelujah Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, this morning, Lord. There's so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. There's so much to give you honor, God. You brought us through every day. Hallelujah. 365 days, Father God, and we are grateful to be here. We didn't have to be here, Father God, but every day that you gave us was a gift from you, and we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. We bless your name, Father God. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. We say, Abba, Father, Lord, help us to come before you, Lord, and submit unto you, Father. Submit unto your will, Father. We bring ourselves totally unto you, Father God, as we enter into your presence, Father God. We welcome you in this place this morning, Lord, and we say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Lord. Allow your spirit to fill this place lord from the front door to the back hallelujah from the foundation to the rooftop father god we welcome you in here today father god so that we are here father god expecting from you today expecting something great father god we praise you now, hallelujah, because we know that you are the same God, a never-changing God, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and we give you honor and praise. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Father God. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you every step of the way lord sometimes we didn't know what was going to go what the outcome was going to be but because of you lord we are victorious lord we are more than conquerors and we thank you lord today we thank you father god for all you've done we thank you father god for what you're continuing to do lord and we're excited lord to see what you're gonna do father god we come today excited about this new year lord we've already seen so much that you've done father god and we know that you can do above and beyond all that we can imagine father god so we're excited to see how much more father god you will doing through our lives this year hallelujah we thank you lord we say hallelujah lord we bless your name father god we open up our hearts to you this morning lord we open up to you father god in this place lord and we say have your way this morning we come receiving you lord we come ready to receive your word father god allow it to work in us father god allow us allow it to continue to transform us father god and cause a shift in this place, Lord. Hallelujah.
hallelujah, like only you can do, Father God. We bless you, Father God. We thank you for the man of God that will come and bring your word this morning, Father God, that he is anointed heavenly, Father God, that you are with him and he will be speaking your word, Father God, just as you give it unto him, Father. We receive it, Lord. We come with our ears open, hallelujah. We come with our, our hearts and minds open, Father God, ready to receive a word from you today, Father God. What will you have us to do this year, Father God? What will you have us to go, Father God? Continue to help us grow to be more like you, Father God. Continue to help us to love more like you, Lord. Continue to help us, Father God, to have forgiveness more like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing the work in us, for never giving up on us, Father God, for being there every step of the way, Lord, never leaving us alone, nor forsaking us, Father God. We bless your name, Lord, for we know nothing we could have done without you. We know we are here today because of you, Father God. Nothing we done on our own, Father God. Not because we was good one day, Father God. Not because we gave one day, Father God, but because of your grace and your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. We can't do enough, Father God, for all that you have done for us, Father God. We can't do enough, hallelujah. We can't praise you enough, Father God, for all that you have done for us, Lord. But we continue to have praise in our hearts, Father God. Praise on our lips, Father God, to lift you up, Lord, because we don't want the rocks to cry out for us, Father God. We will give you the praise ourselves, Father, because you're worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. We give you all honor, all glory, all praise, Father God. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Father God. You are mighty, Lord. You are powerful. You are omnipotent. You are ever-present, Father God. Your word is alive. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, as we continue to seek your wisdom, Lord. Help us to make better decisions, Father God. Help us to seek you in every area, Father God in everything that we do, Father God, yes, Father. that brings us closer to you yes, in Jesus' name. Jesus oh, Father God, thank, thank you. you we love you, Lord, we love and we Lord. say hallelujah, hallelujah to your name, God. Father God, for you're worthy to be you're praised. Worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who are tuning in and those who are in the house. This is the way that we enter into our new year. Yes, We've come to yes. magnify the name of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're able, stand on your feet and bless the name of the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you.
future has made it very clear. He's already worked it. Already worked it. He's already worked it. Already worked it. He's already worked it. Already worked it. Worked it, worked it all. He said he'd never leave me, nor would he forsake me. In the time of trouble, I've confidence to know it. He's already worked it. Already worked it. He's already worked it. Already
break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Holy Spirit, Spirit, break out. We need you to break our walls. situation or circumstance oh God you are real and we love you you're more real than the wind in my lungs and you're more
to you, oh God. We belong to you, Father. Abba, I belong to you. to him because he sent his only begotten son he sent his only begotten son that we may have life and have it more abundantly 
He shed his blood for us. And he gave us the remission of our sins. Oh, Father, we thank you that thank it's you. only because of your love for thank us you. and you. the shedding of the blood of Jesus that yes, we stand sir. here this morning, yes, oh God. Sir. We give you reverence this morning, oh God. Yes. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, we reverence you this morning, oh God. We give you yes, praise, Lord. glory, and honor. It is nothing that we have done, Father. It's not because of our righteousness. Oh. But it's only because of the blood. Somebody the blood. say the blood. The blood. It's the only blood. because of the blood. The blood, the blood. The blood of the Jesus. Blood. The blood. The blood. The blood of Jesus. It is full of power. The blood of Jesus is full of power. Power to free us from a law of sin and death. Power to give us eternal life. Yes. Yes. There was power yes. in the blood of power Jesus. And we honor you this morning, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless you. We magnify your name in this place. We thank you, Father, for new beginnings, God. We thank you, Father, for new mercies. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. My God, new mercies. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. New mercies, Father. Father, undeserved. Mm. We couldn't do anything, God, to pay for it. We couldn't, we could within our own selves, God, there's nothing we could have done to earn it. But because of your mercy, because of who you are, because of who you are, we stand here this morning, God. We acknowledge the fact <laughs> Not happenstance, but the fact, God, that we only stand here today because of your mercy that you've poured on us this day. Thank you, Father, for new mercies. We don't take it for granted, Lord. And today we acknowledge, Father, who you are. You are the great I am that I am. You're the awesome one, Father. Jesus, you're the author and finisher of our faith. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world today, Father. Thank you for taking up residence within your people, God. You are a mighty God. <laughs> mighty in all your ways, Father. And we declare and decree in this place that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that you have prepared for those that walk uprightly before you. So we thank you today, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Father, as we commune with you today, not just in substance, God, but in spirit and in truth, we commune with you today in spirit and in truth. Though we have these things, God, that symbolize what you've done on the cross, Jesus, our communion is in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to commune with you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Saints of God, we thank God this morning for an opportunity to stand. Though we celebrate a new year, there was many that did not make it this year that started off this year with us. And only God knew what this year would be like. And only God knew what we would be like at this moment in this time and in this space so we don't take for granted that we just happen to be here. It's because of his mercy. 
And because of his mercy, we take an opportunity to acknowledge who God is in our lives. I want to bring reference to you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 in the New Living Translation. The Apostle Paul writes a letter to the Corinthians, but he writes the letter to us as well. And it says that for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. He goes on, he says, on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He goes on in verse 25 and says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying. This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. He says in verse 26, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. Verse 30 says, that is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Verse 32 ends with, yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Paul instructs us that we ought to do this as often as we think about Jesus Christ and to think about what he's done and why he did it and, 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 and the, the, the results of him dying on the cross. We should do this, do this as often. And I know we do this once a month, but I encourage you, do it at home. Do it several times a week. Do it several times a day if you have to. Whatever it takes to remember the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Because there's power in the bread and in the blood of Jesus Christ, in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. But what I like to do is that I, love, I, I would love to give everyone an opportunity. Paul says that before we eat it, he says, look, let's examine ourselves. Do a check. See where you are with the Lord. And if you're in good standing, he said, well, let's go forward and, and let's eat and consume and let's commune with the Lord. He said, but there's a chance that you may not be in good standing with the Lord. He said, I'm suggesting, I'm recommending, I'm, 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 I'm soliciting that you do not eat this bread and drink of this cup until you get it right with the Lord. What I love about it is that God's mercy and grace is so sufficient. Even right now, he gives us an opportunity to get it right. And that we have no excuse to still be in right standing with him right before we take this and consume this. That is a matter of our heart condition. That if we just go before the Lord and say, Father, I know that I've sinned. Please forgive me and place me back in right standing with you. It's just that simple and just that easy to be pulled right back into to a right standing with the Lord. And so I'd like to take this opportunity for anyone, just a few seconds, go before the Lord between you and him. Ask him, show for, for him. To, if, if you don't know, ask him to show you. And if you are in doubt, just ask him, God, just forgive me for the sins that I may have committed that has caused us to be separated one from another. I repent, Father. I turn away and I come running back to you. Take a moment and let's repent. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to ask for forgiveness of our sins to ask for forgiveness of anything we've done that discouraged you, that caused you to turn your face away from us. We, for, we, re, we, we repent, Father, 
And we ask, Father, that in those areas in our lives where we're not strong enough, that you will come and give us strength, Father, that we will be more than conquerors over the sin and more than conquerors over these things, God, that would turn us away or, or cause you to be turned away from us. We repent, but we ask for your help. We repent, but we ask for your strength. We repent, we ask, God, for your unconditional love. That it would be shown to us this day that we have an opportunity, Father, to commune with you. And that when you judge us, that you won't see our sins, but you'll see the blood of Jesus that covers our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Saints, let's take the bread which symbols the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we lift it, Father, and we give thanks, and we break it, and we eat all of it. In Jesus' name. And we take the cup, which symbolizes the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the blood that covers our sins. It's the blood. And there's power in the blood. Resurrection power. There's power in the blood. There's power in this blood. And, Father, we hold this up and we give thanks. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary. Our Savior died for us. He bled for us. And he didn't, and he didn't have to do it, Father, but he did it anyway, and we're grateful. We give thanks. Thanks, take and drink all of it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says that after they communed, according to Matthew chapter 26, that they, they went away, but they went away singing and rejoicing. And it's worthy, it's worthy to rejoice. It's worth rejoicing to know that our Lord and Savior died for our sins and we've been set free and we're no longer bound. It's, it's time to rejoice. And so they sang a song. We're going to sing a song, amen, just to just commune to, uh, or, or just to identify what the disciples did on that same night that Jesus Christ was crucified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Bless your name, Father. Bless your name, Lord. Yes, God. Mm. Wonderful Savior. You're a wonderful Savior, Father. You're a wonderful Savior. You saved us. Thank you.
Jesus name. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Amen. Year. Amen. Amen. I was just thinking about the song that they just finished singing. It says, he has won the victory, and he won it for me. Yes. And when they were singing that song, I replaced me with my name. Mm -hmm. He won it for Liz. Yes. He won it for Treva. Yes. He won it for just put your name in that place, and that makes it so much more personal. You know, and it makes you really appreciate it. And it, I thought about that, and it says to me that if I was the only one here on this earth, Jesus would have done exactly what he did for all of us. And that makes us, should make us so appreciative of him and what he did. He loved us so much that he was willing to do what he did if you was the only one here. Amen? Amen. Well, I am here this morning. Again, I would like to say Happy New Year. A new year usually means a new chapter. Yes. So I really hope that 2023 will be an incredible part of your story. So just let Jesus lead and guide you as your life writes that new chapter. Amen? Amen. Amen. I would like to acknowledge all guests. I see that we are all family here. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yeah, so it's so good that we are here together this morning to honor, to worship, to glorify, to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We should do that every day, all the time, whenever we think about it. And those that are visiting with us out there in virtual land, I would like to welcome you as well. If there are anyone out there visiting for the first time, please just hit us up in the chat. Just let us know that this is your first time here, and we'll be glad to get in touch with you and welcome you here as well. Okay, I would like to first of all acknowledge the January birthdays. I think we have two birthdays this month. Carmilla, Carmelo Clifton, amen. Actually, Carmelo's birthday is tomorrow. 
Yeah, so let's just wish him a happy, happy birthday. <laughs> and also Jordan Simmons, her birthday, yes, January 18th. So, you know, as they say on Facebook, SWID, my kids had to tell me what that means. Bridge Church of Alabama, stop what you're doing, and let's wish them a happy, happy birthday. Amen? Amen. All right, now for some announcements. Saturday, January the 7th, 2023, from 11 to 12 p.m. That's the first Saturday in this month. So you know what we usually do. That's corporate prayer. It will be here at the church from 11 to 12 p.m. this Saturday. Women of Purpose, we would like for you to join us for the first Women of Purpose Fellowship of 2022. This month, we will venture outside of the building to an off-site venue where we will have a relaxed atmosphere and we will be talking and discussing things that are going to happen during our upcoming year, things that we would like to see happen. It will be just a relaxed time of fun and fellowship. And uh, the location will be determined. So you will be hearing later when the location, where the location will be in the exact time. Hopefully it will be at our usual meeting time, which is at 11 o'clock, but we will let you know the location. And also I would like to encourage everyone to continuously, to make a habit of checking your emails and your um, text messages because that is going to be the primary means of communication that we will use here at the church. We will give verbal announcements on Sundays and then things will be communicated to you concerning those announcements via Evite and you will get a text message and or an email. So check those and be sure to RSVP. It's crucial that you RSVP to those evites because that's necessary in the planning and the preparation of those events. So make sure you check your emails as well as your text messages looking for, and when you see an evite, respond. RSVP then. Don't say, okay, let me think about it. Because you think about it, you may forget. So just, even if you don't know for sure, if your answer is not yes, or if it's not no, you don't know, just say maybe. And that way, we will plan pre-adventure that you decide to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, I also like to remind you that all scheduled events can be viewed on our website at www.bridgechurchofal.com. We have a calendar there on our webpage, and you can also check the bulletin board out in the foyer as you're leaving. There will be a calendar each month posted on the bulletin board with all the events that we will be having that month. So you can get a head start just by checking that uh, calendar out there on the bulletin board. And um, I would like to remind everyone that um, our Bible study is still going good. It's every Wednesday night, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. It's in-house as well as virtually. So you can also join us via Facebook uh, Live for that Bible study. Corporate prayer, like I said earlier, is every first and third Saturday here at the church. And it starts at 11 a.m., and virtual prayer via Google Meet is Wednesday mornings at 11. Amen? Amen. 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 So that concludes our announcements for this morning. We will now have our offertory.
the good video, it basically reminded us of God's greatness and his goodness in our lives. And I just want to just encourage everyone. I want to just reinforce the video. Uh, there are so many things in there uh, that I'm sure that some of us take for granted every day, even getting in a car, right? Even clothes. And so um, let's just take this opportunity to be thankful to God. Um, and just just uh, recognize him for who he is. And I want to look at, uh, well, I don't know what verse this is right here. I don't even know what, what scripture this is. Oh, it's Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, please. And I just want to look at verse, I think this is 28. And let's look at it in the Amplified Version. Yes, and it reads, he who leans on and trusts in and is confident in his riches will fall. But the righteous who trust in God's provision will flourish like a green leaf. And I just say to you this morning that know that um, the blessings which God has bestowed upon us, they come directly from him. So let's think of God this morning and let's thank God. Uh, with the offering this morning. Amen. Please prepare your offering. And there are a couple of ways that you can give. As you see here on the screen, you can uh, go to, you can text your donation amount to 84321, or you may visit us online at thebridgechurchofal.com. Go to our donate page, and it will walk you through if you've never done it before. Uh, and for those who are here in the sanctuary, in front of you should be in uh, the seat in front of you, an envelope uh, where you're able to fill it out and, and give your, uh, your offering this morning. Amen? Yes, and you can while they prepare their offerings. Father God, we just come before you this morning in Jesus' name, thanking you for uh, just the ability, uh, for the provision, uh, just for us being in our right mind to even want to bless and to sow into your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, that as your people sow this morning, God, they are sowing into, uh, they're sowing by faith into what it is that, that, that they are believing um, for you to do and sowing into you for who you are. I thank you, Father, that because they have the ability to sow, they are already um, have already benefited from your goodness. So I thank you this morning that as they solo, that you will reward them a hundredfold return on whatever it is that they need in their lives. I thank you, Lord, that if it's healing, peace, joy, whatever it is, Father, I thank you, direction, guidance. Father, I thank you that as they sowed their seed this morning, God, by faith, that you were granted unto them, Lord, as, um, as, it is, as it is according to your word. So we thank you this morning. Thank you for being our source, being our strength. We honor you in all that we do, even in our giving. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
my hand and if you believe on my word you can stand I am healer mender of broken heart Alpha says I am that gives you the opportunity to fill in whatever it is that you need him to do I am whatever your finances are lacking I am the doctor that you needs a healing but we always know that the doctor ain't the last word we know that God uses any and everything that he can possibly use to get the blessing to you so I am when you when you hear that, just fill in the blank. I am whatever you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. 
Glory, hallelujah. The man of God said, just fill in the blank. He's that awesome. All you got to do is fill in the blank, and he'll become all that you need him to be. Because he is I am that I am. The great I am that I am. Come on now. Oh, man, y'all, stop, stop it. Stop it. Jesus, that's who I am. What, 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 what? This, about to fall? Just let me be. That's what God says in our lives, man. He, he's trying to tell us. He said, look, look, children, just let me be who I am. Stop trying to do it yourself and stop trying to create another God and stop trying to worship another God. He said, I'm your God. Let's let me be the great I am that I am. I'm more than capable. God is like, God is like, I'm more than capable. Man, the doctor said cancer. I am. I'm a healer. The lawyer said jail time. I am. I'm a deliverer. I can set you free. Oh, my God, man. Thank the Lord, man. Jesus. Oh, God. This that's yours. This is mine. You're trying to get my pen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless your name in this place. We thank you for being the great I am that I am, that we could turn to you anytime, anywhere, any way, turn to you, and there you'll be. You said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for being everything we need. You have equipped us with everything we need. Father, you said if we ask anything in your name, according to your will, Father, you shall give it to us. God, we can't go nowhere else. No, there's nowhere else we can go, Father, that can guarantee us that guarantee. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Bless your name today in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, man. Praise the Lord. Man, I am just, uh, I'm, I'm just, hey, man, that just took me to another level of praise and worship, bro. Thank you. I appreciate that so much, man. And it just gives us clarity to know that in spite of, in spite of what it may look like, in spite of what it may feel like, in spite of what they said, that God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's able to do it. Now, what he's asking is that we trust him trust him. I was talking to my wife, I think it was yesterday, and we were talking about faith, and I said, that's what faith is. Faith is just believe in God. Just believe God. You ain't got to work it up. It's just believe him. Man, I believe God. I just believe God. Anybody else in the house believe God? Yeah. I believe God, man. I believe God. Well, Happy New Year to everybody. Thank God for those of you that are make that made it here this morning. I'm looking around. I told my daughter yesterday that I, I uh, we were talking uh, via text and uh, we talked about uh, whether or not we were going to have a New Year's Eve service last night. I said, no, nah, because I told the saints that I don't want them blaming me for them not making it to church this morning. And then as I look around, I was like, Lord, look like half of them still didn't make it to church this morning. But they can't blame me for it. Don't blame me. I'm like, and I'm like, God, go get them. You know, get them, Lord. If they were supposed to have been here, get them. Now, if they got a reason for not being here, then, Lord, then, you know, bless them. But if they, if they get them or bless them. <laughs> Either way, get them. <laughs> Either way, get them. So I, but I thank the Lord for you all that, that did come this, this morning and for those that had a mind to come and, but could not make it. I, I still bless the Lord for it. And I bless the Lord for those that had a mind or that, that didn't have a mind to come. I'm still going to bless them because, you know, the Lord said we're blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. You know, so Lord bless them that had the opportunity to come and chose not to. You know, they decided to sit home and, and, and just do New Year's Day at home. That's okay. Amen. Bless them, Lord. I pray that they're listening today because I believe that the Lord has a word for everybody in the house. And if it's not for everybody, it's going to be for some particular one that the Lord has uh, created an opportunity for them to hear. Now, if it's not you, the Bible, the Bible says that he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say to him. OK, so so whoever you are, amen, you need to get your ears tuned in because I believe the Lord has a word in season today. I uh, do want to say happy birthday to the January babies. Any January babies? I know we mentioned that we got a January baby in the house this week, this month. Carmelo, I love you today, man. I love you every day, boy. Look at you. 
made it, boy, another year. Another year. Look at you, man. God's been good to you, man. He's been good to you. When I look at your parents, I know God's been good to you. Amen. I want to take a person up as I take an opportunity to personally say thank you all, all of you who, who blessed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at him. <clears throat> Already your body trying to get. I got some boo. <clears throat> take a person, take an opportunity to personally thank everyone for the Christmas gifts and and um, the Corbett's and and uh, uh, Pastor Desmond for being here on Wednesday night doing Bible study for us while we were out of town. My wife and I had an opportunity to go to a pastor's conference um, called, uh, what was it, Pastor's um, Advance, Pastor's Advance, and uh, we were poured into, and it was just a wonderful opportunity. The Lord just really blessed us and really has given us some insight for where we're going this year and some things that, 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 that may be, <clears throat> won't affect, well, I'm not going to say it's not going to affect you because it ought to affect you because it, the, the oil pours down from the head down. And so it's going to affect you as well. You're going to see a, a, a greater anointing in the house as the Lord begins to move this year. There's going to be a greater anointing and it's going to flow down from the head all the way down to, to everyone, all the way down to the youngest. It's going to flow down. Amen. But you got to be available to receive it. You got to be, you have to be uh, you know, ready, ready and available to receive what it is that the Lord's going to do this year. I just know that God has really spoken to us. And, um, and I will share this. <clears throat> uh, the thing that the Lord shared with me was that as a pastor, um, we have done all that we could do alone. And the Lord has just shared that with me, that I've done all that I could do alone. And that it's time for me to try to uh, seek his face in terms of who is going to be there to help us go to the next level. Yeah, I've done all that I can do. I've done, I've poured out, I've done all I can do. And I say that because most of you know <clears throat> we don't have a hierarchy. Hi, hi, what do you call it, hierarchy? Yeah. yeah, we don't have one. You know, God is our God. And uh, one of the things that I've dealt with all these years as a pastor was, Lord, I'm not going to be like the children of Israel and begin to say, we need a king, we need a king, we need somebody over to oversee us when God has overseen us. <clears throat> but he's also taught me that in here, in, the, in this world, that he has used wonderful men and women of God that, that has a greater anointing on their lives specifically to help others go to the next level in, in, in ministry. And so we're seeking the Lord about that, where we're going to go in terms of our next higher level in ministry. And that, I mean, and that could mean many things, a new building, new land. Uh, I mean, there's so many opportunities that I believe God is going to do only because I'm, I'm, I'm going to avail myself to his, his direction and, and, and what he's speaking to us. So don't get, don't get nervous or anything like that. We ain't going anywhere. We ain't going to change the name or nothing like that. You know, we ain't going to, you know, start having to pay, ask you to stop paying, you know, a, a annual fee or something like that. It's, it's not going to be, it's nothing that. It's the anointing. It's, there's a greater anointing that we believe the Lord is going to place upon our lives. You want to say something. I see it in your lip. Go ahead. I see it. Come on, say it. Come on up here. I just want to help bring in some clarity to what it is that you're saying. Yeah. And from a standpoint of, um, so we've been here for years. And as he said, it's just he, he's been relying on uh, just what God has given him, which is great. But in the natural, as pastors, which, you know, what we did this week was great. It allowed us to go and see God manifest things on a different level. From a standpoint of there were pastors there that their buildings have been paid for debt free. Debt free. Um, I, I mean, I can't even, I mean, it was so, mi it was so much. So much. But what it does is it opens our eyes, mm -hmm. even though, you know, we know what God can do, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but to see it fleshed out yeah. in the natural. And so that's what he means by so we want to be able to uh, connect with other pastors, not necessarily someone just going to come in and change the order of things. Right. But we want to to yoke up to be to link arms with those that are doing ministry on a larger level mm -hmm. so that he can continue to give us vision. Yeah. Because if we are cap, right, if we are cap, then you all can't grow. Right. right. And so God has to expand our vision. Yes. 
so right. that the whole body, their your vision can grow along with us moving forward in ministry. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that That's it was good. such a blessing and came back on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I really, mm -hmm. and, and, and that is what it is meant to do. Right. And, and I just thank God just for the spirit of God in him because I have been saying it for a while. Maybe not for a while, but yeah, I've said to you <laughs> that we need that yeah. because you, you get complacent. Yes. And it's, it's like you're hope deferred making the heart sick. But when you see God moving and manifesting, it just even increases your level of faith. Yes, it does. As, as far as what God can do. Yeah. And so um, it was great again. It, so, it, was, it was great. Yes. It was great. And, <laughs> and, and just to piggyback off of that, I mean, we saw kings and priests, if you, if you will, in, in this environment. Kings and priests meaning that we saw pastors who not only preached and taught the word of God, but they were also businessmen. Mm -hmm. They were businessmen. They knew how to operate in the community. So they, 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 are, they are present in the community and doing great things in their community. And I'm looking at them, and I, you know, I had an opportunity to speak to them, and, and I, I told them, and I opened up my heart. You guys know I'm transparent. Wherever I go, I'm just transparent. And I opened up my heart, and I told them that I, I was humbled to be in their presence, to hear the testimonies of the things that God is doing in the lives of these pastors, you know, women and men in the lives of these pastors, and that they were doing such great, marvelous things in the community. And the Lord just spoke again. The Lord just spoke to me and said, you, son, you've gone as far as you can go alone. I'm going to place some something or someone in your life to get take you to the next level, and that's where we are. We've been here, like, like my wife said, four years, and you know we've looked around and said, God, okay, what's next? What's next? Well, God has showed us what next is, you know, and the next is now. The next is now. Hear that in the spirit. The next is now. We're not going to wait for the next thing to happen. We're going to respond now, because the next is now. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, for wifey poo. That might be her new name for this year. No, she said, no, nah, she already cut that off. Um, so that was that was it. So, again, you know, thank God for the Corbett's and and, uh, and, and the Pastor Desmond. I don't know. Uh, you were here. Had Pastor Desmond did okay on Wednesday night? Yeah, Pastor Desmond, my son, my spiritual son. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is just, uh, it's an honor to, and, a, and a, just a pleasure to see him grow as, as God is manifesting his spirit through him and he's growing and it's just a marvelous thing. And I, you know, I, I don't take any credit other than the fact that the Lord, you know, allowed me to be alive at such a time as this in his life that I would be available. And I just thank God for that. But all the work that, that's happening in Pastor Desmond and Pastor Jericho's life is because of the Lord. And it's, be, and it's because they said yes to God. Right. You know, it has nothing to do. They could have said no all the way. Not, it doesn't matter how much teaching or how long they stayed here with us. They could have said no, and, and nothing would have happened in their life. But because they said yes. yes. And I'm telling you, some people say that hallelujah is the greatest praise. I'm, I'm really convinced that saying yes to the Lord is the highest praise. <laughs> when you tell God yes, that's the highest praise because that's what he wants to hear. He wants to hear you say yes. Amen. 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 Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's pray and then let's go into the word. Father, thank you again for this opportunity to stand before your people. I release myself into your hands, God, and I ask that you will use me as your vessel today. I'm honored and I'm privileged, God, that I'm still alive this day to be able to go forth. Uh, anything could have happened, Father. If the enemy would have had his way, God, we would not have been here. But because of you, God, because of your grace and your mercy, you saw fit that I'll be here today to deliver your word that you have for your people. Now, I pray for your people today, God. I pray that they will open up their hearts and receive what the Spirit of, Spirit of the Lord is saying unto them today. We thank you in advance for the results that's going to come forth and change our very lives and our mindsets of what you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Happy New Year, 2023. Uh, we've been through, through some things this past year, mm -hmm. saw some things, encountered some things that we didn't expect, but yet we come today and we say, Happy New Year. Amen. Happy New Year. Okay, so I'm going to teach today, and I'm, and, uh, and I'm going to teach. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach. I think I'm going to teach, maybe not preach. I don't know how God is going to use me today. Y'all know I don't do much preaching. 
Uh, however, I'm going to teach from a standpoint, a position in which God has had the God, where God has taken the liberty to teach me some things. And I believe that what he's taught me is some things that I believe that will be beneficial to those that are under the, the, the sound of my voice today. I, I believe that. And of course, I give all glory to God and for the opportunity to teach his word today. But I wanted to take an opportunity to acknowledge the fact that this lesson was not produced entirely out of me. Um, I want to acknowledge and give credit and honor to um, Dr. Howard John Wesley. He is the pastor of uh, Alfred Street Baptist Church. I don't know if you know him. Uh, if one of the pastors that I follow online. And, and I want to give credit to him. I want to give honor to him because this particular lesson, uh, I've, I've, I, I went back and I've listened to this his, his, this, this uh, message that he once gave, and, and, and the Lord just locked it into my, my spirit, and uh, the Lord used him. He's used him in my life several times, and he's been using him in my life, and I believe that the lesson that he taught me may be beneficial, if not to all of you, to at least some of you. And so I want to be able to take that opportunity to, to teach that lesson today or, or part of that lesson. Most of us have heard the old cliche, um, what is it, um, experience is the best teacher, yeah, most of us have heard that, that experience is the best teacher. Quick question. How many of us today wish, although we've learned some things through the experience, how many of us wish that we could have avoided some of the experiences we went through in life? Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Let me put up both my hands, man. Yeah. I mean, and um, because it's, it's reality that after we've gone through it, we were like, you know, we're like, God, man, that hurt it, that was painful, that, that wasted a lot of my time, it wasted resources, it, it wasted, you know, and so experience, and I come to tell you, experience is not the best teacher. It's not the best teacher. I want you to know today that if you hear and obey God's instructions regarding your life, you don't have to experience things to be taught. I'll say that again. If you... Hear and obey God's instructions regarding your life. You don't have to experience things in your life to be taught. God will give you wisdom and understanding that's equivalent, equivalent to experiences so that you won't have to go through certain things in your life. He gives it to us. He says he gives it to us freely. He said, if any man lack, uh, what is it, wisdom, let him ask for it. And God gives it freely to him. He gives us wisdom so that we don't have to go through some of the things we go through, but yet we still go through them anyway. Sometimes in the Bible, I think the Lord has referred to those people as stiff-necked folks, stubborn, hard heart. You know, and we've been there before where we stiff neck, hard heart, stubborn folks where we want to do things our way. And God is saying that you don't have to do that. You don't have to do it the hard way. He said, there's a better way, an easy way, but I can't show it to you. You just got to trust and believe me. I believe today God is going to give us some wisdom and understanding for this new year that will be so beneficial to you and your life. I, I believe it. I believe that what you hear today is going to be beneficial to those of you that are here and that are listening to me, that it's going to be so beneficial to you and to your life. It said that if we continue to do the same thing over and over again, yet expect different results, they could categorize that as what? Insanity. They say, you're crazy. You're going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, year after year after year, but you expect different results. They say, you're just crazy. It's crazy to even think that your results are going to be different. And the fact of the matter is that because of the results, you see that things doesn't change. And sometimes I sit back and I ask people like, hey, you're still doing the same thing that you were doing last year and the year before? How's that working for you? You know, we do. You know, How's that working for you? How's that working out? You know, because I, I need to know, you know, are you still thinking that this is going to work? And, and the answer is no, it's not going to work. It's sanity. It's crazy if you believe that what you're doing is going gonna, is gonna to make a change. It's said that if we continue to do the same thing over and over, it's sanity. Anyone besides me want better results for this year? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Last year, last year wasn't terrible. I have to agree, last year was not terrible. There were some events, but it wasn't terrible. God still blessed. There were some good things, but do you want better this year? 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I want better this year. I, I want, you know, God to do even better this year. He said that he can do above and beyond all we can ask or think. So what's wrong with us wanting better? I want better this year. If that's you, then you need to get prepared to meet the new. The, if that's you, then you need to get prepared to meet the new you that God is, is preparing for 2023. You need to get prepared for that new person because that new person is going to have to take on some a different attitude. He's going to have, that new person is going to have a different attitude. You're going to have to get a different mindset. And so God's going to prepare you. He's going to give you some instructions today. And hopefully you'll take these instructions and use them for your life. The first thing I want to say, though, is that New Year's Day is just symbolic. Now, I may say some things today that may rub some, some, some folks wrong. You may disagree with me. It's okay. I'm all, it's all right. I've been disagreed with before. You know, and I've learned not to even argue. The Bible, what is it? Is it the Bible? It might not even be the Bible. It might be the Bible, but it may, it may be a different way that he says it, that it takes uh, 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 two to argue. It takes two to argue, and, and if, if, if both people are arguing, then it's really just probably two fools just arguing. So I'm just going to just, you know, if I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm just going to give you what the Lord has given me to give you. But I really believe that this lesson today, that what the Lord is going to teach us today is going to be beneficial. And, and I, I will say again, New Year's Day is symbolic. It's symbolic as far as making a change of mind. It's symbolic because you can make a change any moment in your life. You don't have to wait to New Year's Day to make a change. And so New Year's Day is just symbolic. But some people have really used New Year's Day. I mean, it's like a religion. I'm going to wait till January the 1st and I'm going to do this. As though there's going to be some kind of mystical or magical power, you know, that, that you get on New Year's Day. And I'm, I come to tell you that if you don't make a mindset and change something different or do something different on January the 1st, regardless of what year it is, you're going to still be doing the same thing you were doing December 31st in the previous year. So it's just a mindset. It's just a, it's symbolic to new change. What is good enough, what is good, though, is that God has granted us an opportunity to have a new year because New Year's is symbolic to new beginnings for some people. It is symbolic for some people. Some people need that. You know, it's like they need just a starting point. Okay, I just need a starting point. Let me give it. And there's nothing wrong with, with a starting point. Nothing wrong with that. However, things will not change in your life if you're not intentional about making a change. And you have to be intentional about making a change. You have to be. And I say that as it may pertain to those uh, who make New Year's resolutions. There are people that make New Year's resolutions, and, I, and, I, and, and even though you're making these New Year's resolutions, that even if you don't make a, 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 an intentional, purposeful uh, change of mind or change of habit or change of behavior, you're still going to continue to do the same thing. And the New, Year resol New Year's resolution, ain't gonna do, it's not going to do anything for you. If you don't have a revelation of what God is instructing you to do and you purpose in your heart to, to doing it, then your resolution is just your plans on a piece of paper and God is not obligated to honor them. Hear me, if you don't have revelation, revelation, what is revelation? Is God revealing some things to you. If you don't have revelation to what God is instructing you to do and you purpose in your heart to doing it, your resolution is just your plans on a piece of paper and God is not obligated to fulfill them. He's not obligated to do that. And so sometimes we make these New Year's resolutions and then we want to know why God didn't, why God didn't act on our behalf. Why God didn't do what, what he promised and we never even went to him about it. We, we took the, our plan to him and said, God, this is my plan. This is what I want you to do. But we never sought him and said, God, what is your plan for my life? Now equip me to do it. We make New Year's resolutions. Here's what the Bible says. Nicole, can we go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9 in the New Living Translation. It says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. You can make all the plans in the world. You can make all the New Year's resolutions in the world. Yes. But it's the Lord that determines our steps. He determines it. He determines what he's going to Because most times the things that we have placed on our New Year's resolution requires resources. It requires people. It requires people, time, money, finances, resources. So a lot of times when we, when we, when we uh, uh, put a New Year's resolution up there, we're, we're putting it up there, but... We have to depend on something or someone to provide those things. 
And so God is like, okay, you can put all the plans you want on paper, but I'm going to determine the steps. I, I make the steps. I determine it. Let's go to Proverbs. There's another one in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 in the New Living Translation. Proverbs 19 and 21. It says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. It's the Lord's purpose. And, and, and I, I want to be in agreement with God's purpose for my life. So I personally don't go into the new year anymore making New Year's resolutions. I don't do it. I used to do it, but I don't do it anymore. I'm not a big fan of them. That's me personally. I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions. It's not that they aren't good and necessary. Again, for some people, they are necessary. If you're going to take that before the Lord and then let God critique it and let God modify it and let God make changes to it. But you just can't take your New Year's resolution and say, God, here it is. Make it happen. You know, and I know we've talked about faith and we're saying faith without works is dead. So you got to believe God for it. You still got to believe God for it, but you still got to believe God to add to it or take away. And sometimes it's just a matter of waiting. And if we, we sometimes we get discouraged because we're taking a plan to the Lord and God may be in agreement with it. But he said, not now. He may say not now. Delayed, but not denied. And we get discouraged by the end of the year, and, like, and then we think God has failed us. And God's like, not now, and I can't do this for you right now. It's a good plan, but I can't do it for you right now. And, and it's, again, it's not that New Year's resolutions is bad, but, I, and, but and it's maybe necessary for some people. Because it's okay to have goals. New Year's resolutions is like having goals. It's all right with that. It's okay to have goals. But my personal thought is that if there's something you need to change in your life, why do you have to wait for January the 1st to do it? Why do you have to wait for New Year's to do it? It's not necessary. For me, the beginning of the new year may not be a great time for resolution. But I believe it, that it is an awesome time for reflection. It's an off, awesome time for reflection. It gives me an opportunity to reflect back on what God has done in my life, to reflect back, to take time out and say, pause, wait a minute. What, have, what, 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 you know, what is going on in my life right now? What has God done? What is he doing? And what can I sense that he may be doing in the future? Let me explain. Um, the way God works in our lives is God has, the, he has a way of attaching um, vision to memory. God has a way of attaching vision to memory. And so the first thought you might think is like, well, what is vision? And I'm, I'm not talking about what you see with your natural eye. I'm talking about spiritual vision. I'm talking about vision that happens, you know, in the spiritual realm. And so what is vision? Vision is God's divine revelation. It's what uh, uh, God shows us beyond our natural ability to see. It's, what, it's God's ability or what God shows us beyond our natural ability to see. Revelation. He reveals things to us. He reveals, that, and that's what a vision is. Vision is where God reveals certain things to us that we can't see naturally. You can't see naturally. You can't see, you know, by faith. If God gives you vision by faith, you'll see where God may, may, may be wanting to take you by faith. But if you don't have vision, if God has not given you vision, then, then a lot of times you, you don't know where you're going. And so we're walking, you know, walking, just walking, walking to and fro, not really understanding, okay, where do I go next? But when God gives you vision, he reveals to you the things that you can't naturally see, that you can't naturally see the ability to see. God's vision comes to guide you, instruct you, encourage you. He warns you. That's what God's vision does. He gives you vision to guide you. Vision is there to guide us, to instruct us, uh, 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 to encourage us. I got, a, I got a biblical example. Let's go to um, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 in the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, in the New King James Version. Amen. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a what? A vision, saying, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. And so God's been using vision from the very beginning. He, begin, he speaks to his people through vision. Now, I, I don't know exactly what it was that Abram, Abram, Abram saw, but how, whatever it was, it was a vision where he was able to see it 
but not with his natural eyes, but to see it in the spiritual sense. Here's another uh, biblical uh, example. Let's go to Acts chapter 18, uh, verse 9 and 10 in the New King James Version. Another biblical example. And there's many biblical examples. I just pulled two of them out just, just, just for the sake of teaching. It says, now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a what? Vision. By vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you. For I have many people in this city. So God speaks to us through visions. He speaks to us. He gives us certain things and he shows us certain things. And those things could be, uh, uh, reg- and I can't even, I don't even want to categorize them in terms of how he does it. But when he speaks to you in a vision, you know it's him. You know, you know that, that, that he's showing you something that you can't naturally see. And, and, and when he places a vision in you, you can't shake it. You can't let it go. It, it, it's like it grabs hold to you. And you, regardless of how you try to put it down, it keeps on attaching itself to you. And it's like God, and sometimes it gets so bad that you got, God won't, he would disturb your sleep. It would disturb your sleep until you say yes to the vision. Until you say, yes, Lord, I agree. Now what God envisions, what God envisions for you is oftentimes connected to what God has already shown you or revealed to you, which is revelation. What God envisions for us is what he's already, it's, it's connected to what he's already shown us or revealed to us. So, so when he, whatever it is that he, he has, whatever plans he has for us is already attached to what he's already done for us. His envision, whatever it is that he wants to do for us, is attached to what he's already done for us. Now, what God, uh, um, and I'll say this, um, there's a progressive plan that is playing itself out in our lives, a progressive plan. It's like building upon foundations. Progressive plan. It builds upon foundations one year after another. Each year, God is adding something more to our lives. So that when we get to that place of where, we're, where, we're, where we have been purposed or born, basically born to be, it's progressive. We're progressively getting there. Every year, God is adding to it. And sometimes I know we feel like we, God works too slow in our lives. And, and I confess that, you know, a, a few years ago, I said that Lord had me in this one position for like 10 years, you know, on Fort Benning. And, I'm like, and it was like no progression. I'm like, God, I feel like I'm stuck. But that's where God had me. And then all of a sudden, God began to release certain things, and, and, and now I begin to see the progression of what God is doing in my lives. And, and I've shared this. Me and my wife have shared this in our own personal testimony um, where how we uh, were sent into the city of Opelika as campus pastors. And when we were sitting down here, we thought it was just a temporary assignment. They had no idea that God was going to take, take this temporary assignment and make it a, a permanent fixture in our lives. But he built upon it, built upon it, built upon it. And since, since from the time we were sent down here as campus pastors, uh, we, we've ended up moving here. We've ended up buying a home here. Uh, now my job is about to transition here. You know, but God progressively done it. Every year there was something he added to it, progressively done it. Uh, he provided us with this, this facility. You know, it was just so many things. And so, again, as I reflect back, Again, New Year's Day is just a time for me to reflect back. The New Year's time for me to reflect back and say, okay, God, I see what, you, we, we, I see what you've been doing. I, I see what you've been doing. Taking us up the road this, this, this past week. Again, progressively doing certain things in our lives. And now it's like it's all coming to, into fruition of what God is doing for us. One of the things I've been reading is the, the difference, and, I, I, and this may be just a little biblical history for you all. I've been reading about the Canaanites, and the Canaanites, they're gods. The Canaanites in the Old Testament, these are the, these are the people that Israel had to, had to face. They had gods, gods with a little g. But their gods were gods of, uh, they call it gods of what is a, um, gods of nature. Uh, gods of nature meaning that they, they, they had gods that were fertility gods. They had sun gods, um, you know, just water gods. All their gods were like gods of nature. But God, our God, Israel's God, God our God was, was not a God of, of, uh, of, was more than just a God. I'm going to say he's more than just a God of nature. Right. You know, our God is a God of, of, of God of history. He's a God of the present. And he's a God of the future. 
And so, you know, all that other stuff, the little small guys, whatever they were doing, that doesn't even compare to how great our God is. Again, he's a God of history, he's a God of the present, and he's a God of the future. Um, I think there's a term called uh, uh, omnipresent. Omnipresent, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time, all the time. So that's the type of God we serve. He's, he's that type of God. The Canaanite's God revealed themselves in nature, but our God reveals himself in time. Our God reveals himself in time. God of the past, God of the present, and God of the future. He always reveals himself. He says that I, uh, what's the scripture? Um, uh, ah, come on, y'all. Um, Oh, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm a God of the past, the present, and the future. But there's a scripture that goes hand in hand with that. Sister Mary, it'll come to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. As you see God working in your life, you will, see, you will see progressively that what God has done is always in preparation for what God is trying to do next in your life. If you take the time out and look at your life, Look back and see what God has done. You can see that progressively he's doing some things and he's doing it in preparation for what he's trying to do next in your life. And typically what blocks us is that we haven't taken time to learn the lessons of yesterday in preparation for where God is taking us to tomorrow. We haven't taken the time to, 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 to take a step back and, and look and see and consider, okay, God, what lessons did you teach me that's going to help me Go into this next season of my life. What did I learn from it? What did, you, what, did you, what did you try to teach me? Through wisdom, through understanding, and maybe even through experience. Because sometimes we were hard-headed, and he had to take us through some stuff. He had to beat us, beat us upside the head. Whoop, whoop, upside the head. Whoop, whoop, upside the head. <laughs> but we learned some things. You know, and so he's like, so, so we, we, we miss God if we don't take the opportunity to look back and say, okay, God, what did you do in my life that's, that's taking me into my tomorrow? Remember, again, vision is connected to memory. Vision is connected to memory. What do you remember God doing? And what, did you, what do you remember him doing and how that's going to take you further in this year and in the years to come. There's a scripture, Isaiah chapter 43. Some of you may be familiar with it. And uh, in, the, in the King James Version, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. In the King James Version, it says, uh, King James Version this time, Nicole. There we go. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to read that again. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When God is speaking to Israel about moving forward, he says to them, listen, I am the God that has done some things in your past. I've made some ways, some ways out of no ways. I brought you out. I've delivered you. I've carried you through. I've done all these things. And even in my own life, I think about my own life, and God has done some things that I've seen him do. I've, done, I've seen him do some great things in my life. God has brought me through some things, some storms, one storm after another after another. I've seen him, and you can attest to it. Same thing with you. You've seen God do some things in your life. And if you can't look back in 2022 and see the hand of God, it's because your eyes have been closed. If you can't look back in your life and see what God has done in your life over in 2022, how he brought you out, or bringing you out, or, 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 or working it out, or worked it out. Your eyes are closed. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes are closed. There are some things that happened in your life last year, the year before, that God definitely showed himself to you. God did some things in your life that no one else could have ever done. You take the time out, but it, but it, takes, it, it requires us to take the time out and pause and reflect. Reflect back on what it is that God has done in our lives. God says to Israel, he says, look, I did all that. 
I, I did it. I did all those things. I brought you out. I brought you through. I delivered you. I did all those things. But here's the challenge. Don't dwell in that because I'm about to do a new thing. He said, don't dwell in that. He said, I, I, it's okay to remember it, but don't dwell there. Don't stay there because I'm about to do a new thing in your life. I've got to do a new thing in your life. But, but if you stay holding on to what I've done back there, then I'll always be the God of yesterday and not the God of present. And not the God of the future. She yeah. so says, don't look. You can remember, but don't stay there. Yeah. He says, and he begins to ask the, the children of Israel. He says, um, uh, 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 you can be so, uh, he began to tell them, um, I've done these things, but I want to do something new. But if you stay, the thing that comes to my mind is, you know, when we, when we, when we, when we stay in the past, we, we stay in the past, and the thing that the Lord gave me was that when we're driving forward and we have what they call that, the mirror, the rear view mirror, that if you notice that the rear view, rear view mirror is a lot smaller than the, the, the windshield. And so when we consider what was the purpose, what's the purpose of the rear view mirror? Come on, it's a reflect. You can see see what's behind you, but you can't stay there. If you keep your eyes focused on the rear view mirror, you go, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to crash. And so I like the way God just makes it so practical practical for us that he did not design for us to stay looking, looking in the rear view mirror and staying there. You can't drive looking in the rear view mirror all the way home. I don't care how well you know your way home. You try looking in the rear view mirror all the way home, you're going to crash. And you're going to miss your destination. And so God is asking them, and, 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 so, and so this is what I say. This is what, this is, this is um, so God, is, uh, um, God, God of Israel, um, this is the challenge. And he says, don't dwell there because I'm about to do a new thing. He says that you can be so focused on yesterday that you miss what tomorrow is all about. Now, here's the greatest challenge. The Lord says, I'm about to do a new thing. Can you perceive it? Can you see it? He tells them, he said, I'm, gonna do, I'm, I'm about to do a new thing, but you have to perceive it. You have to be able to see it. You have to be able to take the time out and reflect back on what's about to happen. Do you have a sense of it? Do you have any vision for your life for 2023 that is rooted in the experiences God brought you through in 2022 or before? Do you have a vision for it? Do, do you have any inclination of what God is about to do in your life? I'm not asking you, do you, have any, do you have any unfulfilled dreams? I'm not asking about that. I'm not asking you, do you have a, I'm asking you, do you have a definitive vision of your life in this year, 2023, that is directly uh, connected to something God did last year? Definitively connected to what God did in your life last year. What did he do in your, your, your life last year? Playing football. What did he do last year? What lesson did you learn last year that's going to catapult you into this coming year? He's taught you some things. He showed you some things. There were some things you had to suffer. There's some pains. There's some losses. And then there were some victories. How do you reflect back on that? And how do you take that and use that to gain a greater uh, position in life that God is trying to prepare for you? But he's saying that oh, but you have to have a sense of it. You've got to believe it. You've got to know that I'm trying to connect the dots. Our lives is just a matter of connecting the dots. That's what our lives is about. He connects the dots. Something in 2022 was simply meant to prepare you for the greater thing in 2023. Can you see a progressive movement of something God is doing? God says, I need you to have vision for that. I need you to have vision for it. You have to have vision for it. You've got to have a vision of your life on the other side. A vision for your life on the other side. If you can't see yourself on the other side of a storm, you'll never make it through the storm. you got to see yourself on the other side of the storm. You have to believe, God, all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. you got to believe that. So in, in the middle of a storm, you still got to believe, God, I'm, you're going to bring me through. You're going to bring me through. What did he tell the disciples when they were going across the Sea of Galilee? He said, let us go to the other side. He didn't say, let us try. He said, let us go. And so... By faith, you have to believe that he's going to get you to the other side. Yes, and so vision tells you that in spite of, 
in spite of the circumstances that you may be facing or in spite of the circumstances that may be happening in your life, if God gave you a vision, now I gave you two biblical examples, right? Abram and, and Paul, God gives you a vision and, he, and, and, that, and those visions, he said, don't, don't worry about it, I got your back. And I'm par- paraphrasing, don't worry about it, I got your back, I'm going to be with you. If God gave you that vision, in spite of what the storm looks like, you got to trust God. He's going to get you to the other side. Amen. He's going to get you to the other side. Yes. So one challenge I'm going to put before you, this is the challenge. Determine what is God's vision for your life for the next year. It's a challenge. Determine what is God's vision for your life for this next year. Not what you're dreaming of. Not what you want. Not what you put on your vision board but what the Lord has in store for you. Not what you're dreaming of, not what you want, not what you put on your vision board, but what the Lord has in store for you. No more living life in happenstance. We can't do that anymore. We can't live life in happenstance. Oh, what it, let it be, let it be. Let's just, let, let's just go with the flow, baby. Let's just go with the flow. You can't do that. Not when you're purpose, you're, when you live in a purposeful life, you just can't go with the flow. Going to flow will take you down the river. <laughs> down the river, <laughs> it takes you out. It will take you out. Do you have any inkling of what God wants you to be? What God wants you to do? What the Lord's assignment on your life is? This isn't just dreams. I'm talking about vision. Not dreams, vision. Well, what's the difference, Pastor? Dreams may be something you want. Vision is what God has in store for you. Dreams is something that you want. Vision is what God has in store for you. What is it that God has in store for you? The question I want you to ask yourself, do I have a sense of God's vision for my life, of what I'm trying to achieve in this new year? That's where I am. That's where I am. I'm trying to get a new vision in my life. Where is it that God is trying to take us to? I'm getting a greater understanding that in my life, in my own life, God's vision for it is not in terms of resolution, but more in reflection. It's not about resolution. It's about reflection, reflecting back on what it is that God has done and doing in my life. Now, God has shown me through Dr. Wesley that there are some things that I know I need to do to align myself up with God's vision for my life. There's some things that I need to do. Dr. Wesley suggested these things or some of these, and I'm going to do these for myself in this year to help me get to where I believe God wants me to be. Now, maybe you all may agree with some of them. Maybe you may agree with one, two, three. Maybe you may agree may agree with all of them. Uh, I, I'm hoping that if you don't agree with them, maybe it will encourage you to go home and write up your own things that you need to do, yeah. some, 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 some definitive things and, 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 and that you know the Lord has been speaking to you about, some things that you know you need to do. God is telling you you need to let go or you need to go after or you need to pick up or you need to, you know, go back and read that book. Whatever it is, it could be something as simple as God saying that I need you to read this particular book. I need you to I need to read two books. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is, let this lesson today encourage you. I believe that there's a new you in 2023 God wants you to meet. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. The question is, what do you need to do to get there? Now, these things may not be for you. However, if you expect different results this year compared to last year, you have got to do something different. If you do the same thing this this year as you did last year, I'm going to call you crazy. (laughs) You're crazy. (laughs) That's right. I said it. Pastor called me crazy. If you were expecting different results, and you're still doing the same thing that you did last year, you're crazy. <laughs> hey, I'm not, look, I ain't going to call you know, people in the, to come get you and put you in a white suit and nothing like that, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You're crazy. So here we go. Y'all ready for this? There's some things that the Lord gave me, and I want to share with you. Number one, make a decision in this new year to live a called life and not an expected life. Make a decision in this new year to live a called life and not an expected life. Now, I'm going to break this down to you. Now, I'll tell you why I say this. The, the stresses that we have or that we encounter in life is based on agendas. A-G-E-N-D-A. 
as agendas. The stresses that we face in life is based on agendas, based on the priorities of what we're trying to uh, make happen or get done in our life. Those agendas determine what stress level we're on. They're, they're, and I've, I've categorized them in three different agenda categories. Agenda number one, um, and this is normally how we live our lives. We live our lives based on three agendas. The first agenda is what you want to do. What is it that you want to do? What your own desires are. Your own desires. That's agenda number one. Agenda number two, what others expect you to do. That's their desire for you. What others expect you to do. That's, that's, that's a second agenda. We live our lives. Normally, we live our lives based on what others want us to do, whether it be parents, friends, associates, coworkers, bosses. And then agenda number three, and what um, you are called to do. Agenda number three is what you're called to do. That's God's desire for your life. What are you called to do? Three agendas, what you want to do for yourself, what others expect you to do, and what you feel you're called to do. There's three agendas. That's normally how we live our lives. Now, Matthew, uh, Matthew what is it, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, in the New King James Version. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. If that scripture <laughs> means anything, it means that you ought to start at the bottom of the agenda, which is agenda number three. If that scripture right there means anything, then we need to start not with agenda number one, but agenda number three. If that scripture right there means anything, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The first priority of your life ought to be to do what God has called you to do, and the rest of it takes care of itself. That should be the first, the first agenda that we should always acknowledge in our lives. I have to conclude within myself that if I live the life God wants me to live, and my highest priority is pleasing the Lord, then really, at the end of the day, if my seeking to please the Lord doesn't please you, that's not, that's not my problem. That's your problem. And you have to get yourself in the same position that if you decide that your number one priority or your number one agenda, uh, agenda is pleasing God and there's someone in your life that, dis that disagree with that, that's not your problem. That's their problem. They have a problem with that. And so we have to determine in our lives that I'm going to make God my number one priority. I'm going to make God, uh, God's agenda my number one priority in my life. And if anyone has a problem with that, that's their problem. Yeah. It's not my problem. It's their problem. I'm going to live a called life. A call, what is it, whatever it is that God is calling me to do, I'm going to live a called life. I made a decision in this new year. I'm going to live a called life and not an expected life. I'm going to live a life fulfilling what I've been called to do and not necessarily what people expect me to do. Called versus expectations of others. Now, I know that this will be a challenge for some folks because some folks are used to doing what other folks are asking them to do. And I know, but, it's, but it, it becomes a necessity that you make God your number one priority. Let me give you a biblical example. Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, um, again, I, re I referenced this earlier. Mark chapter 4 is about Jesus crossing over to the Sea of Galilee with the disciples. Um, the disciples are crossing over and the storm comes. Um, if you all remember the story, what is Jesus doing? Sleeping. He's sleeping, right? He's sleeping. Verse, verse 38, Mark chapter 4, just if you're taking notes, verse 40, verse, uh, 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 Mark chapter 4, verse 38. The Bible says that he's sleeping. Down in the lower parts, he's sleeping. What are the disciples doing? They're panicking. They're panicking. They're panicking. You, you all see the contrast? The contrast, the difference? Now, that they're, they're, they're both, everyone is in the same storm. But one set of people is panicking, and another set of person is sleeping. There's a contrast. Can you see the contrast? The disciples are panicking and Jesus is sleeping. There's no greater contrast of behavior than folk running around panicking and somebody sleeping. Somebody's worried and somebody else is snoring. 
That's two different perceived ways, right? They're all in the same storm. The disciples are panicking and Jesus is sleeping. They wake Jesus up to get his attention, but they wake him up because they want, they, they want him to panic too. So they wake Jesus up and try to get Jesus to panic the same way they are, they are because their expectation is that you ought to deal with the storm the same way we are, which is panicking. And Jesus is sleeping as a way of exemplifying to us a critical lesson. What is urgent for other people may not even be immediate for you. So other people, because they're panicking, it doesn't have to be your panic. It doesn't have to be your emergency. And so people will come to you with their panic and their, their frustration and, and you got to do something, you got to do something. And you can just be like Jesus and say, that ain't my problem. That's not my issue. This is not my time to worry about that. And Jesus did not, he, of course, you know the rest of the story. He got up, but he asked them, he said, oh, ye of little faith. But there's a contrast in, in, in what other people identify as an emergency that demands attention may be something you need to sleep through. What other people determine an emergency is something that you can just sleep through. But what we do a lot of times is that we take on their emergency. We take on their agenda. And it's not our agenda to take on. Sometimes we just need to point them back to the hill from which come up their help. <laughs> and then we go back to sleep. But no, we, 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 we get out of bed. We go run down the road. We try to fix it. And, it's not, and, and we try to play God. And I've been there. Try to play God in the lives of people when, when really there's only one God who's able to do exactly what needs to, to happen. But they become so dependent, dependent upon us because we, we, we've gotten to a place where we became, we, we, we've gotten in the same boat with them and, and operate under the same storm and panic just like they do. And Jesus is sleeping as a way of exemplifying that lesson. Just because it's pressing for you does not mean it has to be pressing for me. If this is not what God has called me to deal with, I cannot allow your urgency to create a stress in my life. I cannot allow you or, or, or what you panic over to cause me stress in my life. I cannot allow what you need and what you want most and feeling you want me to feel to change how I feel. I cannot allow that. I cannot allow that because what happens when I begin to do that, you begin to pull from, from, from my purpose. You're pulling from, from what God has purposed me to do. That's number one. Number two. I've decided to make a decision to protect, or uh, let me say this, we should make a decision, again, this is for those who have an ear, let them hear, uh, make a decision to protect your spiritual and emotional peace at all times, at all costs. Make a decision to protect your spiritual and emotional peace at all costs. I'm personally making a promise to myself that I am not or that I am going to protect my peace. I'm going to protect my peace. One of my favorite scriptures is in Philippians chapter 4, verse uh, 6 and 7 uh, in the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter, se- uh, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 in the New Living Translation. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience what? God's peace. Not peace, but God's peace. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. The older I become, I realize that there are two gifts that God gave me that I cannot let people threaten. Two things that I know God gave me that I cannot let people threaten. He's given them to me and he's given them to you as well. And those two things is time and peace. Time and peace. He's given all of us those same things. But I've come to realize that those things are so valuable in my life right now. You can mess with my money and I can get it back. You can mess up my credit, and I can build that back up. You can can dog me out, talk about me, create a a, a bad reputation for me. 
and I'll just find some other folk to hang out with. <laughs> but when it comes down to my peace, those two things that those are the two things that come from God that I cannot allow you to mess with because I cannot get those things back. I can't get it back. Once it's gone, I can't get time back. It's gone. If you disturb my peace, I can't get it back. If I give you my peace, it's hard for me to get it back. Time and peace. Time is what God gives me every day. It's a gift from the Lord. One of the worst things to get, uh, to get with is someone who wastes your time. For someone who wastes your time, it's, it's just so bad. They, they, they start pulling on you, pulling on you. You know you got other things and better things to do, and they just want to waste your time. Now, if you're like in your mid-20s or low below 20s or 20 or below, this may not be as important to you. You know, it's been told that, you know, younger adults don't really consider this as much. But I will say this, that if you were about in your mid-30s, almost in your 40s, you start to really care a little bit more about, about what's happening. You begin to have a little bit more respect for your time and your peace. You start to really figure it out. Do, do I really have time for this? You know, you in your 30s and you know you're 40, you're like, do I really have time for this? You begin to question now. Yeah. Do I really have time for this? Yeah. Now, for, for those of you, those of us yeah. that, that hit the promised land yeah. <laughs> over 40, <laughs> and, and in 40s done got behind us, yeah. man, you know, right now we're like, look, you know I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for nobody to be wasting my time. You'll, you'll hang up on somebody in a heartbeat. You, 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 you close the door. You go, what? Catch a tone. I ain't got time for this. Click. I mean, I remember telemarketing, man. I used to get on the phone with telemarketing and just talk and just entertain them. Now, I'm like, I ain't got time for y'all. I've learned, look, I don't care how disrespectful it may sound to them, but I immediately say, ma'am, I don't have time for this. Goodbye. <laughs> Click. I used to just take the time and listen to them, let them do their whole spiel, and then tell them no. I ain't got time for that no more. When you get to a certain age, man, you ain't got time for that because you realize your time is invaluable. Your time and your peace is invaluable. So the one thing you ain't going to do is you're not going to mess with my time. God gives me peace. Peace is a gift from God too. You can't manufacture it. You can't create it. You can't buy it. You receive it from the Lord. Paul says, when you pray, God gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace you understand isn't really peace. A peace you understand isn't really peace. You just, you know, you just learn how to deal with it. A peace you understand. But a peace that passes all understanding is only peace when you go, I don't know why I feel this way. I should be crying right now. I should be crying my eyes out. I don't know why I feel this way. I'm just happy. I don't know why I feel this way. Uh, Another month where there's more month than money, but I don't know why I'm not worried about it. or breaking down. I don't know. I'm not worried. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not worried. There's more month than money, but I'm, I'm not worried about it. She cursed me out, and I don't care. She cursed me out, and I don't care. I don't care. He slapped me, punched me inside the head, and I'm good with it. I'm all right. They fired me right, right before the bonus time. They fired me. They knew what they were doing. They fired me right before it was time to collect the bonus. But I'm okay with it. I'm good. That's the peace that passes all understanding because the peace that passes all understanding have other people le- looking at you and, and wondering. They waiting on you. Oh, he about to go off now. Oh, y'all better, got, y'all better get ready. Can y'all fit him on that desk? He coming back. He about to go Rambo on somebody. But the peace that passes all understanding, you be like, bless y'all, bless you. May, hey, that, that position that you just fired me from, man, I pray that the Lord will fill it with someone that's more capable and that will bless your business. The peace that passes all understanding have you speaking things out of your mouths that, don't, that, that the devil don't expect you to say. Amen. That's the peace of God. Here's what the Lord says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. He says, his peace guards my heart and mind. His peace guards my heart and mind. So here's why I have to protect my peace, because my peace protects me. My peace, my peace guards my heart and my mind. So I have to guard my peace because it protects me. Everything God's trying to do for me and in me. If I don't protect my peace, then I'll make myself vulnerable. 
So my peace protects me. It protects my heart. It protects my mind. It protects me. It protects my life. I want to share with you a scripture in Proverbs chapter 20. Um, Proverbs chapter 26. How do I protect my peace? I protect my peace by making certain that I don't allow toxic things and people into my space or into my life. That's how you protect your peace. Don't allow toxic people or toxic things to come into your life. And when you do allow those things to come into your life, it reminds me of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11 in the New Living Translation. Some of you probably never even realized this was in the Bible. It says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. Whatever the Lord shared with you in reference to last year to show you where there was toxicity, don't go back to it. Whatever the Lord shows you, again, remember, this is a time of reflection. So if he shows you that there were some toxic relationships, toxic behaviors, Toxic thing, whatever it is that he showed you that was toxic, don't go into this year doing the same thing again. It's no different from a dog returning back to its vomit. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as this, as this, as this scripture. If it made you throw up once, and I'm not just talking about people, I'm talking about some things like behaviors, mistakes, bad decisions we've made. If it made you throw up once, it's going to make you throw up again. And every time you throw up, if you go back to it, it's like going back to the vomit. It's like going back. What could be more disgusting than watching a dog vomit and go back and eat it? What's more disgusting is a saint go back and do the same thing they did last year after God delivered them out of it. It's just as disgusting. And that's why accountability is so important, that we have some type of accountability in our lives. Because if we have some type of accountability, uh, some type of accountability, you know what you need in your life. You know that this is what you need in your life. Because accountability, you, you need someone who's going to be watching you do this. And, and they'll say, um, girl, that's disgusting. Don't do that. Don't go back and don't do that again. Man, you're going to go back and do that again. You know what happened last time. Don't go back and do that again. You need some type of accountability. Someone in your life is going deter you from going back to it. So accountability is so important. So if you didn't have accountability in your life last year, get some accountability this year. Get someone that's going to encourage you to do the right thing and not go back uh, doing the same thing over and over again. Protect your peace. Protect your time. Number three, this is the last one. We need to make a decision to remember the past but not to live in it. Make a decision. To remember the past, but not live in it. There's some things that happen to you you'll never forget, but you have to choose not to live in it. There are some things that happened last year or the year before, and we have not been able to let it go. And God is saying that you can't live there. You can't live in it. You all remember, and I'm not just going to reference this. We don't need to go there, but in Genesis chapter 19, uh, just talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. And it talks about Lot and his wife. And when the angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah and God has uh, determined that he's going to destroy the city, God comes and he tells Lot and his wife, y'all got to get out of here. Y'all got to get out of here. You got to get out of here now. Um, but they hesitate. And, and the angels are trying to tell them, get out now. This is the window of opportunity. You have to go now. And, and so God encourages them. And so they decide to, to leave after the angels practically have to grab them out of there. They decide to leave. And, 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 you know, and I can imagine the angels saying, come on, guys, let's go. Come on, you all got to go. Grabbing them saying, let's go. It's no time to play. Let's go. Let's get out of here. I'm not playing. It's time. It's running out. And when they come out, the Lord tells them, don't look back. He tells them, every, he tells everybody that was being delivered, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. But now the, the story says that Lot's wife is running, and she's running with everyone else. But she turns, and she looks back, and she turns into a pillar of salt. The point of it is, the Bible, to look back at something, is to see it. It's almost like having a sense to want to still be in it. So, when, so that's why God always tells us that, that, that when, you, when, you, when he's delivering you out of it, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't go back to it. Don't turn around and go back to it. Your memory is good enough. 
Lot's wife could have just remembered what, what uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was. Yeah. Also, she had the memory of it. Yeah. She didn't have to turn back and look into it. She had the memory. And a lot of times that's all we have. We have the memory. But don't allow your memory, don't, don't, don't allow yourself to get locked into that memory. Because when you lock yourself into the memory, you lock yourself into the pain. You lock yourself back into where you were and, and what, maybe even how it felt, how, whether it felt good or whether it felt bad. But you lock yourself into that position. And if God is trying to deliver you and take you to another place, and he's saying, look, I need you to remember, because I, I, wanna, I, I need you to remember where I brought you from, but you can't stay there. You can't stay there. You can't stay there. Lot's wife could have kept going and remembered the city without ever looking back. It's in your memory, but you don't have to desire it anymore. She, she looked back because she desired it. That was the reason why she looked back. She still desired to be there. And God is like, don't look back and desire to be there. Get out of it. If you got a memory of it, okay, that's good. But don't stay there. If God was gracious and merciful enough to bring you out of it, you don't have to keep reliving it because here's what I promise you. I promise you God never delivers you from something without taking you to something else better. He never takes anything out of your life without putting it or replacing it with something better. He does. I'm a witness, you all. I'm a witness. My life, my entire life is, I mean, when we talk about progression, my entire life has progressed from a, a, a quality of, of, of where I thought it was not ever enough to a life where there's more than enough. More than enough. I, I'm, I'm, my life is such a, and such, I am such a, ble- and I say this, and I tell you all, you have to repeat this to yourself. I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man, and that's not bragging on me or my abilities. I'm a blessed man because God has blessed me to be a blessing. So now I'm in a place where I, we grew up in the projects, and me and my, I remember that um, uh, me and, me and, um, me and um, my mother and my sister and baby sister, they all had to share one bedroom growing up. And the reason why I didn't stay in the same bedroom with them because at that point my mother thought I was a teenager and that I needed my own space. It was a one-bedroom apartment. So I've gone from a one-bedroom apartment to, to, to this day we own two homes. I'm not bragging on me. I'm telling you that when I made up my mind that I was going to serve the Lord and not look back but let him continue to uh, 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 direct my path, and I begin to say yes to him, and I begin to say yes to, the, to his ways, and I begin to say yes, God, whatever it is, whatever your plans are for my life, I begin to see God begin to take my life, and the quality of my life has gotten better and better and better. And no, I have not been perfect. And even, and even though I have not been perfect, he's still yet blessed. Even in my imperfections, he's still yet blessed. He's still yet blessed. So don't keep living in something God has already taken his hands off of. Don't keep living there. Don't keep living there. There's another story in the Bible with Samuel. In the book, book of Samuel, um, the Lord said to Samuel, uh, when, when God decided that Saul was no longer going to be the king, the prophet Samuel went to, uh, went to Saul And he had to tell Saul that he was no longer going to be the king and that God was going to take him off the throne. And the Bible says, I believe 1 Samuel chapter 16, the Bible says that, um, let's go to that last scripture real quick, Nicole. And I'm going to close with this scripture. Wow. I had had more, but we're going to close with this. 1 Samuel in the NIV version. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? He had to ask him, how long? He says, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen him uh, of his sons, excuse me, to be king. God is asking, how long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to stay? He was asking Samuel, how long are you going to mourn? He's like, get up, shake it off. It's over. Stop, stop. Don't stay there. Shake it off and move forward. Don't stay there. Don't allow what, 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 what uh, has happened to keep you in bondage anymore. How long are you going to live in something that you know God has said is not for you? 
I know it hurts. I know it wasn't pleasant. I know it didn't go down the way you thought it should have. But God says, don't stay there. It's not for you. God has given a new opportunity for a new day to move in a new direction. There's something better out of it. There's something better that God wants to do. Something better God wants to do in our lives. But if we don't take the time out to reflect what it is that he's already done and see what he's trying to do in our lives, you never see the next step or the phase in life. You never see the vision that God has in store for you. God's got great vision for this church, but not just this church. He's got great vision for each and every one of you. You got to take the time and opportunity to reflect back and see what it is that God has done progressively in your life. And it's a, it's a road map. You look back, you can kind of like see the road map of where he was taking you. Oh, okay. Relationship. Oh, okay. It's a road map. And you begin to see, okay, God, okay, I may not have it all. When he told Abraham, he said, I want you to go into a land that you know not of. He, he didn't give me any details. He just, just, he just said, go. And I, I think Abraham asked, well, Lord, how would I know when I get there? He said, you know. You know when you get there, you're going to know. You're going to know. And so all we do, we just got to continue to, face, to seek God's face and do like, uh, what is it, do like Paul said, you know, I press, toward the, the prize of the, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. That I don't consider myself to, to, to have comprehend or, or to achieve, but I press toward the mark and I, and I don't look back anymore. I'm not looking back. I'm pressing forward. I'm moving forward. I press. I press. And so that's what we may have to do this year. You may have to press because the press may be pressing to forget or, or, or to let go of where, where you were last year and only use what happened last year or the year before as a tool to help catapult you to where God is taking you. Amen. 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 Can we go to Hebrews 13 and 8? I said that was my last scripture, but she decided to throw another one up in there. Thank you, baby. Hebrews 13 and 8. Let's look at it in the New Living Translation. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. That's the one I was trying to find. Thank you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the one earlier today I was trying to find. Thank you. What made you go to that one? Flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you, girl. The Holy Ghost did that. Amen. That's the same. So God is a God. He's a God of the past, the present, and the future. God is God is yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can we give God some praise today? As you're standing, I want to give an opportunity. Give up, give you all an opportunity. Anyone who wants to make a new, a new change in their life today, make some new decisions. Anybody who wants to make a new decision. So here we go. We talked about it. Three things. Make a decision in this new year to live a called life and not an expected life. Make a decision to protect your spiritual and emotional peace at all costs. And then number three, make a decision to remember the past, but do not live in it. Don't live in it. Three important things. Again, these are things that I'm going to apply to my life. I'm going to apply to my life. I don't know if this is something that you might want to consider. But if not these things, then whatever it is that God has placed in your heart that you know we might need to do different. And it, and it, and it ought to supersede any, or, or let me say this, if you are one that loves, loves to do re uh, resolutions, make sure that you've included God in your resolution. Make sure God is, a, God is you know, number one agenda in your resolution. So everything you start off with and your resolution Make sure you put God first in it. So I'm seeking God that I may be. I'm seeking God that I may do. I'm seeking God that I may have. Make sure that God is a part of your agenda. Amen. The number one agenda in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name today. We give you glory, honor, and praise for the instructions you've given us. We pray, Father, that you will do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Thank you, Father, for teaching us today that there are some things in our lives that if we continue to do the same thing over and over again, we're going to continue 
continuously get the same results. Father, we don't want the same results. We want to do better. We want to go higher. We want, to, we, we want everything to go to another level in our lives, Father. And we will be mindful to give you the praise. We'll be mindful to give you the glory. Thank you, Father, for taking what, what we do have and magnifying it, multiplying it. You're able, Father, to take the smallest thing that we have and multiply it, that it may become great and big. Thank you for every gift, every talent that you've given us. We pray, God, as you have said in your word, that if we are faithful over a few things, you'll make, a, make us rulers over many. We want to be faithful, Father, over the few things you've given us. Give the increase, Father. Give the anointing. Bless, bless us, Father, with the anointing. It's the anointing that makes the difference on our lives. It makes the difference. It, it changes things. It takes it to another level. Father, I pray that this year will be, again, a year of no other year seen before in our lives. That if we should live to see the ending of this year, that we will reflect back on what you have done and we will, st we will still be in a place of continued praise, perpetual praise. We will continue to be in a place of perpetual praise, always praising your name, always giving thanks in all that we do and all that we say. We give thanks. Now, Father, if there's anyone who needs to receive you as their Lord and Savior today, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. I pray that they are in a place or in a position to receive you. I pray, Father, that I've done all that I could do to encourage their hearts. Now, God, I pray that you give the increase. Bless them, God. Open up their heart and allow them to receive you as their Lord and Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anyone out there who wants to give their life to the Lord today, you may do that. It's a simple prayer. It's a prayer of salvation. Many people have waited to this day, New Year's Day, to decide that they want to live a sanctified life. I'm just praising the Lord that God has given you that opportunity to do so. Many people did not live to see this day. I will say to you that if that's you, don't take for granted that tomorrow is promised. Though he, may give us, though he may have given us this day, tomorrow is not promised. So I encourage you, if you're still on the wall, if you're still on the fence, still considering, should you give your life to the Lord today, I'm encouraging you that there's no better time than now. God loves you. He wants the very best for you. He has uh, so much in store for you. The quality of your life, you have not even seen the quality that life, that the quality of life that God is able to give you if you just say yes to him today. If that's you, say this prayer with me. Father God, you know my life and you know how I've lived it. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. They buried him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. That power is what saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me new life through Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. If you said that prayer, we believe that you have given your life to the Lord. We believe that you are saved and you now belong to the Lord. We thank God for you. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. We pray that this new year will be a year where God will release every blessing with your name on it. Every blessing with your name on it. There's so much happening in the world today. The signs, you're still wondering, you know, if, they are, if we're living in the last days, the signs are telling exactly the truth. We are in the last days. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Children don't live to, be, to, to become adults anymore. Um, 
Right now, people are dying at 40 and 50 years old with heart attacks and strokes. I just had a co-worker just reported to me last week, co-worker who was healthy. He just left the job a couple years ago. He's a healthy man. They found him dead in his sleep, had a stroke and a heart attack. Healthy young man. Tomorrow's not promising. I'm not saying that to scare anybody. I'm saying it because it's reality. And if you, if, if, if you have not decided to make changes in your life, that now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask my lovely wife to join us today. Um, I just wanted to just uh, briefly, um, I'm not going to prolong the hour, but I did want us to take note that and I'm so glad that really you really uh, just allowed the Holy Spirit to have his way today. Um, I know that, um, you know, the praise and worship went long. And then, of course, we had uh, communion today. But I really thank God that you allowed the spirit to have his way and not quench the spirit. Amen. Because I know I can say that everything that came, everything really that happened in the entire service was needed for me. Amen. And so I want I want to encourage all of us that as we go into this new year, that God, as he continues to take the service and the ministry to another level, that we all really just be patient with God yeah. and allow and, and us embrace the called life called and not life. the expected life. Yeah. And um, I, I just believe that God is pleased today in we have never set out to say that, you know, our service is this long or that long. But sometimes because of the way our service operates, it could feel as though there is a set time. But there is, it really isn't. And so I'm saying all this to say that I, I just, my prayer is that as God continues to do more of what it is that he wants to do, that we are all willing to be willing to allow the Holy Spirit and not quench the Spirit. Amen. 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 And just know that whatever it is that God is doing in your life is beneficial. It's it's beneficial. And 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 medicine is beneficial, but it doesn't always taste good. There are times where we have to have surgery on these bodies because we got to a place where it's beneficial to to, to, to have the surgery rather not to. And so there are times where we have to determine, do we want to continue to live with the pain or do we want to have to, have to, have to be cut on? And so we, when we get cut, it's painful. The healing process is painful. But then when it's done and, and all healed and we feel a lot better, and so sometimes God has to cut us and purge us and, pu and, 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 and do exactly you know, the things that he does. And sometimes staying a little bit longer means that you know, God has something that he wants to make sure that he's... Um, Pressing into your spirit. Amen. I do appreciate your patience. I do appreciate all of you that came today. And I appreciate all of you that have watched us today. May the Lord continue to bless you. May I, can I speak a benediction over you? Actually, what I would love to do is, because this is the first Sunday and the first of the year, I would like to personally, if you want specific prayer this, this, this day, this morning, I want everyone to just you. You want, to, want me to pray? Uh, me and my wife pray over you this morning or this afternoon now. Line up here in the middle of the aisle. We're going to take the opportunity to pray over you. Uh, I'm going to say a word of benediction for everyone else who has to leave. But anyone else who wants a special prayer today, specific prayer, line up in the, in the middle of the aisle. We're going to pray for you. Father, thank you. Bless these, your people. Keep them in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you. You spoke about your peace today, Father. It's that peace that passeth all understanding. It's the peace that protects everything else in our lives. We thank you, God. You told us to guard our heart with all diligence. Yes. For out of it are the issues of life. It's our peace that guards our heart. Father, we thank you that your people are blessed beyond measure. That this year, they will receive blessings upon blessings upon blessings. This year, the enemy can do them no harm. This year, they have a greater expectation of you and that because of their expectation of you, you're going to come through because you are a God of promise. You're a promise keeper. And Father God, you are, as we said it earlier this day, the great I am that I am. 
in everything your people need. Father, they shall find it in you. We thank you today. We thank you, God, that the blessing of Abraham is upon their lives. The blessing that as they go into the fields, they, be, they, they will be blessed. As they go into the city, they will be blessed. That they are the head and not the tail. That they're above only and not beneath. That they will be able to occupy houses that they didn't even buy. That they will be given, God, property. Things will manifest in their lives, God, like they've never seen it before. Hallelujah. This is the year, God, where you begin to do ex ex extraordinary miracles in the lives of your people like never before. We pray this prayer, and we believe it, and we stand on your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Saints. We love you so much. I'm Pastor T. This is Pastor Latrilla. You guys know what's up. We're out. God bless you. Amen. Yes.